My pop, do you still consider yourself a scientist? Yes. I'm probably still the best scientist here in Coastal Harbor. He came here when he was 20, and it's been his whole life. In an important way, Cold Spring Harbor is Jim Watson, and he, he's very, very devoted to the place. I would say that it is one of the things that he probably feels he's going to be most remembered for. Scientists on both sides of the Atlantic are now up in arms over comments uh, quoted from the uh, biologist and Nobel laureate James Watson. Watson sparked a furor when the UK's The Sunday Times quoted him saying, I'm inherently gloomy about the prospect of Africa, adding, all our social policies are based on the fact that their intelligence is the same as ours, whereas all the testing says not really. In 2007, he made uh, some very unfortunate comments about race and intelligence. It was like a bomb going off on, on campus, so um, um, it um, sent everything kind of spinning. I um, thought, whoa. So this is not good. I mean, what's happened, you know? Where's the gym? I knew. And that wasn't all. Watson was quoted as saying he hopes everyone is equal, but, quote, people who have to deal with black employees find this not true. He said anyone who has had black employees knows that this is not the case. Right? Just put the little dig right in there. Yeah. Tonight, the Nobel laureate's job at a prestigious laboratory is on the line, and his reputation is badly bruised. Are there any studies or any tests that support his statement? I mean, what is he talking about? Uh, well, he is talking about a, a literature that developed over the 20th century in basic IQ testing that does show a result of persons of European descent and persons of East Asian descent in the United States and also across Europe and Asia scoring higher on IQ tests than persons of African descent. Now, one has to be very careful, however, about imputing a meaning to the differences in the results, particularly a genetic meaning. The most obvious causal factor that would be accounting for the differences in IQ test scores would be the physical environment that the two groups live in. In the United States, European Americans and African Americans have never lived in the same social, environmental, um, economic, and physical environments. And hence, any outcome from those tests cannot be ascribed to genetic sources. The brain, it's a, it's a device. Yes, the genes make the device, but what it's capable of doing depends on having good nutrition and eight trillion things we don't begin to understand. Furthermore, it's not agreed upon by psychologists that IQ tests are actually really measuring intelligence. Were you surprised to hear Dr. Watson making these comments? I mean, he, there is a history here of this man making some very controversial statements. Well, in Watson's case here, he's really talking about things, personal beliefs and biases that he has that he'd like to be true and that there's really no scientific evidence for. And I, and I find that irresponsible. I'm the first person of African American descent to have ever earned a PhD in evolutionary biology. And when I was um, interviewed by Anderson Cooper, I tried to maintain the scientific high ground and, and not in the interview um, give to the, the viewing audience the pain that I feel every time I read these words about how because of my genetic heritage, I can't be or I'm not as good a scientist as Watson was. I, for me personally, he stands for, in my world, stands for critical, radical thought. And, you know, how you could go back to uh, uh, old, rooted notion um, that has nothing to do with crit critical thinking today. I, I don't know. I really don't know. It's not science-based. And that's what makes you concerned that um, what happened to cause him to say it. We had been in the habit of taking gap year kids from England. When Jim and Liz had uh, 
a, a young woman who was staying with them for a year who worked at the laboratory. She went back and uh, became a journalist. Somehow she got herself the job of writing a profile of him. And he gave an interview. And unfortunately, um, she had her tape recorder running, which um, I doubt my husband was aware of the fact that she had it running. He said, why don't you come with me to the tennis game and we can talk in the car. Yeah, I was trying to keep the girl amused as I drove her back from watching me play tennis. That's it. <laughs> so what really concerned me was how my tennis was. The moment I read it, I knew I was in deep. It was picked up in the British press, and it just blew up in, in, in a few days. Well, you get into trouble because you can't control yourself. I mean, no. and, and, but sometimes we don't know. I mean, just take the race stuff in yes. Africa and Europe. Yeah. The question still is, how could someone as smart as you are say what you did? Oh, I, I was saying something to a girl. I never thought of a reporter. She lived in our house for a year. Well, that doesn't make any difference. I mean, no, you said I, it. I was treating her like a daughter. And uh, uh, well, that doesn't make any difference uh, either. Did you think the thought? <laughs> Sure, I thought the thought, whether it was right or wrong, I didn't think it was appropriate ever to say it in public. Right. I never expected this woman who lived with us for a year would write an article which would make me uh, despised by uh, so many people. I regret it, but I can't erase it by now saying I never meant what I said. Recognize it was off. Oh, God, yes. Instantly. I saw that. Uh, you know, this is the worst trouble I'm ever in my life exactly. because it, it hurt people and I didn't intend to hurt people. And it implied that uh, some people I work with I have poor impressions of. I don't. I had calls from Washington that were saying, should Cold Spring Harbor even be supported by? public research grants with somebody who has an attitude like that. My main concern at that time was making sure that Cold Spring Harbor, the institution in 2007, was not going to be linked to uh, statements which fundamentally, I think, haven't been proven and are con very, very controversial. Part of the reason for that is the history of eugenics here, back going way back into the 1920s, 100 years ago. I didn't want Cold Spring Harbor to get recast in the era of the eugenics movement again. Early on in the history of Cold Spring, uh, a scientist named Charles Davenport uh, took over the leadership of the biological research there. He believed in what was known as eugenics, that um, if you prevented certain people from having children and promoted other people to have children based on their genes, you could improve the human race. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people were sterilized because they were deemed unfit. By the 1930s, the only people promoting them were Nazis. They were awful. The Nazis in Germany were uh, embracing eugenics and promoting it. They were celebrating the work of these American eugenicists. But back in the United States, people like Charles Davenport were uh, on the outs. Other scientists were realizing that it was just a way of justifying racism. All these old uh, uh, attitudes were being propped up by a, a poor reading of genetics. By the time that Watson arrives in Cold Spring in 1948, uh, this sordid history with eugenics is in the past. I was not in the slightest interest in eugenics, and nor was anyone there. The laboratory has been incredibly open, putting all of this up on the web. That was, you know, under Jim's watch. And in fact, he and I have had this discussion that given the history of the laboratory and eugenics, we can't we can't revive this. They must have had board members come out from New York to, you know, to decide whether he should be fired or not. 
There was some sentiment to ask him to, you know, step down from the laboratory completely, and uh, I completely opposed that. That was not even remotely on the radar screen for me. And the next day, Jim was fired without a lawyer or or anything. It was it was it was it was like a kangaroo court. We wanted to make it clear that Jim Watson had no administrative role at the laboratory. That did not mean that we fired him. That meant that we made it explicit that he had no administrative role. I don't think what he said was defensible. Mainly the comment about African-American employees. I wish he had, for, for lots of reasons, but mainly for his own reasons, uh, he would think a little bit more about when, what he says because he has done so many amazing things in his So going back, over 10 years, right? In 2007, the lab removed him as chancellor after he told the Sunday Times he was, and I quote, inherently gloomy about the prospect of Africa, end quote. Because, and I quote, all of our social policies are based on the fact that their intelligence is the same, of ours, the same as ours, whereas all the testing says, not really. And I'm going to give you that again. What is false about this statement? Reprehensible. What is false? All our social policy, uh, policies are based on the fact that their intelligence is the same as ours, whereas all the testing says not really. And that is undeniably, factually true. When it comes to like the bell curve, at the highest end of the bell curve is where you really will see ethnic differences, right? So, I mean, if you want to look at uh, uh, language skills, uh, Ashkenazi Jews, uh, very high up there and so on, uh, spatial reasoning, you've got a lot of East Asians and so on. But at the very highest ends of the bell curve, that's where you're really going to see differences between ethnicities and between sexes, right? So there are almost no women at the very highest points of the IQ curve, almost none. So Watson, who is he going to be dealing with? Uh, he's not He's not the night manager at Burger King, like to be honest, right? He's not. He's not working at a car wash, making sure people show up on time and host down the cars correctly, he's working at the highest levels of scientific inquiry. And according to the bell curve, there's just not going to be a lot of black employees up at that level. And of course, we have affirmative action, which is pushing people up through the ranks who may not otherwise be there. And he's telling you this is a reality, right? So he said, Watson apologized at the time, but in a recent documentary, he said his views have not changed, right? So his views, no facts, no facts, no data. His views have not changed. Not at all, he said in the PBS doctor, documentary, American Masters Decoding Watson, the New York Times reported. So then the question is, how do you present the ideas of someone who has not changed his mind? Do you say, well, here's the data that was presented to him, which had him end up with this perspective, right? So here's, here's the IQ testing, uh, here's uh, uh, all of the uh, differences in, in, in brain volume and so on. And so if the data hasn't changed, like he's a scientist, right? Which means that he has to follow the data if he's going to be a good scientist. And he is, of course, an excellent scientist. So if the data has not changed, why would he change his perspective? See, this is the frustration of bullies who didn't win. Right? So he did apologize, which was a shame. Now, listen, it's fair if you present startling information in a way that can be very easily misconstrued, then yes, you can say, I should have phrased it better, or I should have done a better job of bringing the data to bear on this conversation. And I have for, I mean, I've got experts, I'll, I'll link the interview series below. I've talked to 18 world-renowned experts on human intelligence. Not, of course, that they would agree with everything I say, but uh, I've got a lot of, and I've read their books and their articles, and I'll, I've got a whole playlist below, and I've introduced the data uh, over time, and uh, I get it sensitive and so on. But why would he change his mind? This is frustration. It's like, well, we, 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 made, we got him dismissed. We, we got him to sell his, his Nobel Prize. He, he, he got humiliated and then he apologized and then there's this real frustration it's like well it didn't work now he's back saying the same thing right he's really an unreformed racist uh, right so he says i would like for them to have changed that there be new knowledge that says that your nurture is much more important than nature but i haven't seen any knowledge and there's a difference 
on the average between blacks and whites on IQ tests? I would say the difference is it's genetic. 